Recently, children have been at the center of the news. The law charges the government to give full protection, welfare, and rights to its young population, but statistics say otherwise. The National Statistics Office, for instance, cites that the child labor incidents in the country increased over the past decade by almost 30% from 4.2 million in 2001 to 5.5 million in 2011. This Christmas season, about 30,000 street children ply around Metro Manila. The government, meanwhile, says they are doing their best to uphold children's rights and welfare. The Department of Social Welfare and Development, or DSWD, allotted 62.6 billion pesos for the implementation of Pantawid Familia this year, which the agency will even more expand next year. Welcome to Opposing Views, a hard, straightforward discussion of today's most pressing issues. The best Christmas gift that we can give to our young population is to ensure that they are in good living condition, receiving equal protection of rights, and that they are empowered. After all, they must be under our watch. So tonight we ask, is the government doing enough to protect children's rights and welfare? Good evening, I'm Rod Depomoceno, and this is Opposing Views. Joining us tonight, our discussion is Patricia Luna, Executive Director of the Council for the Welfare of Children, or CWC. Good evening, Patricia. Good evening, Attorney Rod. Yeah, um, uh, can you give us your thoughts on this question? Do you think the government is doing enough to protect uh, children's rights and welfare? Yes. Um, the government, all the branches of the government, no, um, are doing its best to mm. uh, protect children uh, mm. and uh, for the children to enjoy their rights. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have different uh, initiatives, different mm -hmm. uh, several initiatives, uh, be it laws, be it uh, programs and services, be it mechanisms at mm -hmm. the ground in order at the local level in order to address uh, issues on children. All right, thank you very much, Patricia. On the opposing side is Rowena Legaspi, Executive Director of the Children's Legal Rights and Development Center, Incorporated. Good evening, Wayne. Good evening, Rod. Yeah, um, and uh, can you tell us uh, your position on this question? Do you think the government is doing enough to protect children's rights uh, and, and, and their welfare? Um, no, the government mm -hmm. is not doing enough its uh, best to protect children's rights mm -hmm. and welfare. Otherwise, NGOs like Children's Legal Rights and Development Center, who is committed to advancing children's rights and welfare, will not be here to monitor uh, government's compliance, especially in its uh, human rights obligation, specifically on the human rights treaties and the Convention on the Rights of the Child that it ratified uh, some years back. All right. Okay. So let's start off the discussion. Um, but uh, there, as you know, in during this time, especially, you know, um, there are a lot of children that I see uh, roaming in the streets. I, I was coming here to the studios, and uh, someone, uh, a couple of children, knocked on my uh, on my window, and and this is more prevalent now during Christmas. Um, and uh, a lot of people are asking this, you know, uh, why, why are these children roaming around? And, and th there's a lot of them. Uh, is the government doing uh, its best to keep these children from this uh, harsh condition of being on the roads and, mm. and uh, begging and, and, and selling? Mm. Yeah, uh, we are all aware you know, that during Christmas, mm. children love to stay on the streets mm -hmm. because they, are, you know, they, they see uh, fun in mm -hmm. doing begging so they actually find it yes, fun yes uh, they enjoy if, they, if we talk to them they, of, uh, they want yeah. they 75 percent of the street children they have their families oh, okay yes, right. they have they're not families. they're not really not not really uh, homeless homeless, homeless, homeless or, no. yes oh. but of course there are children who are really uh as 20, i said 75 yeah, percent 25 percent 25 percent do not have their own homes so mm -hmm. these are this is the uh, focus of the government, no? how mm -hmm. we can help the children with their families in uh, looking for a uh, shelter because, mm -hmm. we, of course, we do not want these this, uh, families and children to be staying on the street without a without, uh, roof mm -hmm. on their head um, and suffering from uh, malnutrition mm -hmm. uh, and uh, some uh, needs that are not met. No? Mm -hmm. So that um, for always, year by year, mm. 
we are looking at uh, what are the responsive programs and services or interventions? So, for example, in NCR, mm -hmm. this is where we get, see um, many of the children on the streets. So, uh, uh, even with, before Christmas season, we, the, the, the SWD, uh, mm -hmm. for example, uh, have their conditional cash transfer. And uh, for homeless children, homeless families, yes. they have modified conditional cash transfer. How does that work? That, that means that uh, even families without homes can be avail of the conditional cash transfer. And how do they avail of that? There are uh, children, of course. So, do you go to them? And, uh, I mean, of course, there are social workers, there are community workers, mm -hmm. of course, involve, involving the local government units mm -hmm. in identifying who are these homeless mm -hmm. uh, children, homeless families. And uh, they are assessed and evaluated. And uh, one of the intervention is to give them shelter and so there is a how, how we call it, we, there is a uh, um, housing assistance, housing uh, assistance in yeah. form of uh, financial assistance wherein the dswd the especially the ncr uh, look at uh, places where they can stay and mm -hmm. uh, pay the owner of the houses mm -hmm. for a six month uh, rental yeah. but Within the six months, there is an objective of providing livelihood to these families so that after six months, mm -hmm. they can be, of course, uh, be able already to meet some of their needs. But it is not uh, uh, mandatory. No? Mm -hmm. This is the, at the minimum mm -hmm. period that they are given other intervention, other services, okay. so that they will be ready later on okay. to, you know, uh, provide for themselves okay. and then become a member, member a of, member the, of the citizen. Okay. and the, no, uh, regular beneficiary of the conditional oh, cash transfer. Okay. All right, when uh, you, you obviously see a lot of children also in the streets, do you think that, are you satisfied with what Patricia just said that, uh, that the DSW, oh, well, uh, you're an adjunct of the DSWD, no? at least there, the department and all, uh, I guess, branches of government are doing their best to, to address this. I know that your organization is more focused on sexually abused children, is that correct? Uh, and also I'm, children in conflict with the law. Uh, yeah, children in conflict with the law. Uh, are, are children, let's say, begging the streets, which is what's common that you see in, in, uh, during Christmas time. Do you think that uh, the government is, is addressing this sufficiently? Or do, do you feel it at least? Well, um, if the government is really doing its best or doing enough as, you know, uh, we will not see these children roaming in the streets if there are, like what Miss Patricia said, that there are lots of programs mm -hmm. that the, especially the local government providing for this, uh, the community, the parents, no? Shelter, yeah. Then we will not see them in the streets roaming around. We'll probably if, not, yes. not see them increasing in number. Right. I, th I think generally, do you feel that it's increasing in number or do you think that it's just the same every year? Well, I think it's exactly the you no know, the same. It's increasing actually every year, you know, and we don't know what the particularly local governments are doing right now to address that issue because every year you see children in the yeah. streets, every, especially in December, mm -hmm. that um, there are lots of children roaming around the yeah. areas, begging in the streets, and yes, as I mentioned so before. So it, it does imply that. That, that the yes. programs are not working. Right. Ma'am, ma do you it's agree that uh, the fact that there are children, and some, some people observe actually the number is increasing. Mm -hmm. And I, I hear you that some of them are probably just doing it for fun and maybe just to get a little aguinaldo from, mm -hmm. from the, uh, mm -hmm. those in, in traffic. Mm -hmm. no? But uh, mm -hmm. the, um, of course, yeah, uh, the fact that they're still there. Based, based on, on some studies, no? uh, it's not only the government that has to do, that should do its role. No? Mm -hmm. it's, it, runs, it boils down again to the culture to the beliefs of, of the families, mm -hmm. how the parents uh, look at their children, are they the means to support the family. Mm. You know? So we always look at the family values. And uh, you know, the paradigm shift in, in, in what that we are advocating is that Filipino family, should, it should start from the family, mm -hmm. you know? uh, looking at uh, the children as, uh, as they are not to be used, not to be used or exploited. And of course, this will go through a process. It's yeah, not it, a, it's not a, just a you believe uh, the government, click of the... Do you think it's the government's responsibility also to tell the parents on how to... Yes, that, that there are programs like that. Look, for mm -hmm. example, in, in the, 
the Barangay Council for the Protection of Children, they are being trained and oriented on how to build the mechanism in the ground, mm. no? monitoring, especially in okay. the monitoring of I the like communities. To, I, I like uh, to, uh, for us to address that point no, regarding this barangay training on, on families. Uh, but at this point, we need to take a short break. Uh, meanwhile, you can join the debate via Facebook at facebook.com slash opposing views on 9TV or tweet your thoughts on opposing underscore views. Use the hashtag OVChildRights. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. You're still watching Opposing Views. I'm Rod Nepomuceno. We have with us uh, Patricia Luna, Executive Director of the Council for the Welfare of Children, or CWC. And on the opposing side is Rowena Legaspi, Executive Director of Children's Legal Rights and Development Center. And our debate question for tonight, is the government doing enough to protect children's rights and welfare? Now, just before the break, uh, Patricia was making a point that uh, it's not just really the national government that's involved. Uh, also, you feel that Families should take a proactive role, and the barangays, as you mentioned, uh, play an active role in training parents on, on, on how to, I guess, uh, address this, this issue you know, of their children going to the streets and, and, and begging and, and caroling and uh, putting their lives in danger, so to speak. So now I'll, I want to ask you, Wang, do you, do you think that these uh, programs are really felt, I, I mean, really felt by, by most people or most of the parents of these children who are out there? And secondly, I wanted to ask you uh, your thoughts on, uh, mentioned by Patricia earlier, the thought mentioned by Patricia earlier was uh, that some of these kids are actually just having fun when they're begging in the streets. Right. So the first question, yeah. The, okay, the maybe I about would the like to answer the second question. Right, on ahead. the doing fun thing that Patricia mentioned a while ago, that uh, if some of the children or, or the increase in number during this season no, in the streets are because the children are having fun, no? But I don't think it's the thing that uh, you, have to, you have to say that they're having fun because begging is different from you sing Christmas carol to the people and, you know, people will give some food or something mm -hmm. they want to give, no? Mm -hmm. But it's different when you see children really begging, not sing caroling, but really begging in the street, no? For mm. alms and regard, and, and, uh, thinking more, yeah, do you think that they're, not, na they're, they're begging because, because it, it's also fun because they're not going to Perhaps we have that, that is related to the first question okay. right. on is uh, do you, you, you ask me if I felt it? Yeah. The, the program, program the, the, of the, the local government, program, for example, yeah. the barangay. The okay. Of training the parents. You know. Well, Personally, uh, to tell you know, our we have our best offices in two barangays in well in Kalaohan. So, in one of the biggest barangays in the Philippines, which is in particularly in Barangay One Seven Six, no. And to say that the barangay have enough programs for the parents, no, you will not see these children no loitering in the street if there are really enough program or there are enough uh, things that this barangay really... Well, there's a program, but it's not that implement. Is that, is that yun ba yun Yes, implementation is another thing, you know. Uh -huh. There are lots of uh, barangay ordinance or, or laws that are really nice or that really uh, address children's rights and welfare, you know, but to breath life into this law is another thing because mm. implementation is another thing. Well, we have a lot of laws that protect children, but the question is... Does it go down the grassroots really? le yes. level? No? Mm -hmm. Now, okay, let's go to another, um, the, uh, your thoughts involving um, uh, children in, uh, involved in crime. No? Um, mm -hmm. Do you agree that we should lower uh, the age of conviction of children in, in conflict with the law? And then I'll ask Patricia the same question. Uh, I don't know if you, you've seen the, the, the video. There, there was a video of, of children actually ganging up on, on a security guard no? and always bullying him. Uh, uh, they were in a group. Uh, so some people are saying that you know, we should lower uh, the, the age of conviction of, of, of children in conflict with the law. What, what are your thoughts on that? Okay. Uh, our, our position is very strong. We say no mm -hmm. to lowering the age of criminal responsibility. And to tell you, Rod no, and Pat also, we, we have been working on juvenile justice issues for the past 12 years. and. 
these children, we can say and we can prove it that they are thrice victims before they became offenders, okay? Mm. So, statistically speaking, yes, they, they statistically offended, speaking yeah. you don't, we, we don't have the right to judge these children that, oh, the, the age should be lowered because you're doing, they are seen as criminals and not as children, not as victims, no? They were victims before and when you put them in jail, they become again a victim, no? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay. I don't think it makes sense but, when Patricia, you What, what are your thoughts age? on that, on, on, on lowering the, the age of of, of, of conviction we, of we, have, we have the same position, no? the government, mm. okay. um, of not lowering. Mm. We, we fought for that very strongly. And uh, why is because there are studies that were conducted which shows that the age of discernment mm. is, is uh, 15 and above mm -hmm. because there was a, there was a, uh, a plan to uh, lower it to nine. Yeah. Imagining a nine-year-old child Having in jail, yeah, yes, is no. so uh, right. So it's, it's, it's a violation. All right. Now, in, re in relation to children. that, in relation to what we're, we're discussing here, do you think now that there are enough laws to address children's welfare? Uh, uh, but maybe the more pressing question, and I, I'm I'm struggling with this: is are are they being implemented the way that they ought to be? Yeah. Rod, um, the CWC had an inventory mm. of children's laws. Mm -hmm. And we have 40. You have 40. Laws. Four zero. And every time we attend trainings or conferences abroad, mm -hmm. country says that the Philippines is very good mm -hmm. in enacting laws. So at least internationally, we have we're, enough we're, laws. We've been, we've been uh, yes, recognized. recognized. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, but of course, we are still struggling, still struggling in fully implementing the laws. Mm -hmm in order to respond to children issues. Mm -hmm. So there is always a review of the existing laws, of the existing programs and services, mm -hmm. and how we can strengthen. Always we find the need to strengthen mm -hmm. the uh, local. So there's a continuous yes, review and, uh, and, 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 and I guess desire to improve. Developing them. policies. All right. Do you think uh, Wayne, that it's programs. sufficient? I mean, uh, as Patricia mentioned, there's a constant review of the laws and there's a constant evaluation of how they're implementing it. And as I made, you made a fine point earlier this evening when you said that there will be no need for organizations like you if th such was the case. Mm -hmm. Do you think that uh, we all know that it's, the, the laws are never perfect and mm -hmm. implementation uh, is a continuous process, but do you think that we are doing uh, what is, what I would say, we can do within our powers, within our resources? Do you think it's enough what, what, what we're doing, given our, the resources, given the laws that we have? Uh, as Pat said, there are more than... 40 laws. Yeah, yeah 40 laws, no? So, Protecting so children's as, rights. I guess, insofar so as, far as the legislation is concerned, I, I think we're, we're okay. Doing, yes, we're forward, doing... Yeah. But the question is, as I mentioned earlier, the question is, uh, law is more powerful when you put life into it, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm going back to the question of implementation again, mm -hmm. no? There are lots of laws we can utilize, no? To address children's issues, protection, no? But the question is, uh, why there are still many violations committed against children? Yeah. Why there are many children in jails mm -hmm. when, in fact, they should not be in jails, no? Mm -hmm. And to Apart say, from those, so children being in jail, uh, what, what else, do, where else do you see the gross violations of, of, of government? Um, where, where do you, is it in, in, in the increase in sexual abuse cases or uh, among children? Yeah. Uh, what, what are the... In your mind, what are the ones that are being are the need specific focus by by the, by the government? Well, of course, all of the related uh, children's rights protection, development, their survival, no best interest of the child, the determination. So when you say where they should focus, I think uh, children's rights are a very very broad issue, mm -hmm. and there are lots of aspects of it and there are lots of violations we don't only talk of the sexual abuse child labor etc um, what we and there are laws that they are actually addressing all these issues eh, no mm. the child labor and everything but 
according to your data a while ago, it's 5.5 mm. in 2011, no? mm. the child labor. So these things are uh, regarding child sexual abuse. It keeps on increasing. Actually, our office also... The statistics show that it's yes, increasing. Yes, and our office also uh, provide legal intervention and psychosocial intervention mm. to ch uh, children who are sexually abused. No, We have this in, in community in Barangay Bagong Silang in 176. So to say that they are really doing its best, I don't know because... Um, I think no, for our part, personally, mm. especially on the advocacies we, we pursue, no? Which are? Which are? Uh, the, well, the juvenile justice issue juvenile justice and issue. then okay. the children who are sexually abused, okay. no? In terms of the violation that they actually receive, it starts not only from the, from the time they were violated, but until no they pursue their cases into some institutions mm -hmm. like court no because of the insensitivity of yeah. the system no things like that so yeah. uh, i so, don't think yeah all right no uh, uh patricia uh, the dswd has major programs for, yeah. for for children such as uh the pantawid familia um supporting studies of these of these kids no as well as uh balik provincia uh do you think that these have been successful mechanisms so far for the government yes Mm -hmm. because, in, what, in what way? Well, uh, yes. how, how would the you Pantanid measure? The Pantanid Familia Program yeah. has enrolled 4.3 families. Mm -hmm. And in every family, there are five children, average. Mm -hmm. okay. They are given educational uh, benefits. No? So mm -hmm. they can, there are um, assistance that would help the, the children go to school. Mm -hmm. And there are an avail of health uh, services in the mm -hmm. community. Okay. okay. And there are evaluation or, uh, yes, assessment done mm. on how this impact these children. Mm. What kind of assessment would you, would you have? Is, is that maybe more children are in school? Or, yes, of or, course. You know, you, yes, so of you course. have statistics yes, for that? Yes. And they yes. are, uh, the children in school, the, sus the attendance, the attendance is higher, in the school yeah. yes, is sustained no? mm -hmm. compared to those non Pantawid Pamilya mm, okay. program. But of course, it's not only the, the program, mm. and it's not only the DSWD that has educational program. Mm. There are many, many, more. many okay. agencies. The Department of Education, they have the, the uh, alternative learning system. Mm. Okay. They have other education programs that would address the children with physical disability. Mm -hmm. The IP, okay. uh, Indigenous Peoples Children. Okay. Without this program, then more, mm. perhaps you can see that there are more children. Do you, do you have born. the number of, uh, I mean, numerically, is there a statistic that you can sh say that uh, there, because of these programs, there's X number of ki kids who are in school? Yes, uh, for 4.3 families, 4 .3, you get oh. the five, uh, five children from each family. Uh, five so this, this five children for each family. Each family. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, when, are you familiar with this Pantawid Familia program, and do you think that it's successful to some extent? Uh, Oh, well, well, from our point of view, I think no, because... You think it's a dole out? You think it's a dole out? Not only that, Rod, it's... Um, sometimes it's discriminatory and it's selective and mm -hmm. maybe... Do they cause more harm, you think? Do you think that it, this, this kind of assistance costs more harm than, than good? No, there are families who really deserve mm -hmm. to be given this Pantawid Familia, but they are not being given, no? There are people who come to our office in our desk center in that community that I mentioned. But uh, when you ask them, no, sometimes it's the barangay that are very mm -hmm. selective. It's like a mentality of who do you know, whom you know, or, mm -hmm. you know, the... the you think there's a palakasan uh, right. like system and in those who really deserve to be given the, maybe the SWD should look into it also. The, there are reports because our net, one of our networks, we are a member of mm -hmm. the Philippine Alliance of Human Rights Advocates and we conducted, the field rights conducted its research study mm -hmm. on the uh, results or if it's it really helping them. Now one issue that uh, came up is this issue of being, it is very selective and those who really deserve mm -hmm. This, okay. Uh, okay, that's an interesting point, uh, and I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll have to interrupt you at, uh, at the stage, but I'd like to ask Patricia's uh, opinion or thoughts on that. But in the meantime, we need to take a short break. Uh, keep tweeting and posting comments on our social media pages. More issues on children's rights in the Philippines when we return. You're watching Opposing Views. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. You're still watching Opposing Views. I'm Rod Depomoceno. Still with us, Patricia Luna, Executive Director of the Council for the Welfare of Children, or CWC, and Rowena Legaspi, Executive Director of Children's Legal Rights and Development Center. A question, is the government doing enough to protect children's rights and welfare? Now, we, we wanted to discuss, uh, before we proceed with the next question, uh, when you were making a point that it seems that the Pantawid uh, program of the government, uh, there seems to be, I guess, Tagalogin uh, natin, para palakasan system, and there seems to be, uh, it seems to be based on who you know and uh, um, and the, the way, if you know the process, then it's, it's better for you. you know? uh, Patricia, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that there's parang this palakasan system in the Pantawid program? And can, can you enlighten our audience? Uh, what this Pantawid pro or how this Pantawid program yes. uh, is, is, is really implemented? We are, we are always uh, no, saying that wala itong palakasan. No? Kaya nga marami naggagalit sa DSWD na iba-ibang mga local uh, counterparts because they cannot even give us the names of those they know na, na mag-avail ng Pantawid Pamilya Program. It goes, it undergo a uh, process, na no? yung system of uh, mm -hmm. targeting, which is the National Household Targeting System. There are criteria, there are indicators na nakaprogram yun. Hindi, it is the system which uh, validates, no? which, or not validates, but check on the, on the data. At mm -hmm. ito ay binavalidate ng ating mga municipal link. No? Mm -hmm. It's not the barangay. They don't have any hand on the documents, even on the documents. Mm -hmm. They are only informed mm -hmm. of who among the validated uh, families na nag-undergo mm -hmm. ng targeting system ang nag avail ng Pantawid Pamilya. It's because the barangay has also a role mm -hmm. to help the families uh, achieve the objective of Pantawid Pamilya, for example, they have to help ensure that yung mga uh, health centers are there, barangay health centers are there, yung ating mga schools are there because the national government cannot do the monitoring on the ground. Mm -hmm. So the DSW has hired municipal link. Ito yung mga nagmo-monitor itong mga uh, anong to mga municipal link ang nagtitingin. Ito bang mga batang ito nagko-comply sa mga conditions mm -hmm. because there is a, a uh, kung conditional, uh, may mga verification. No? One of the rule of the Pantawid Pamilya Program is they have to uh, to conform or to achieve yung conditional, mm. uh, kaya nga sinabing conditional transfer. One is that the children should be in school at mm. least 85% in attendance. Mm -hmm. Yung health uh, check-up ng mga mothers. Mm -hmm. Uh, ito, yung mga, ito yung mga dapat makita. But hindi po pwede lang na gano'n na health and education. Mm -hmm. We have to look at how is the parenting skill of the families, how is the relationship in the families, what is the family values. Mm -hmm. And therefore, pag ganito yung kailangan ibang mga elements of the program, ilang, ibang components, we also of course need the barangay uh, counterparts. No? Mm -hmm. And they have the accountability to do it. It is mm -hmm. the mandate. Okay. Always. Mandate, ang sinasabi namin, the barangay has the mandate mm -hmm. to, oversee, to oversee, to monitor families within their community and sabi nga namin, dapat na pe-prevent eh. Na pe mm -hmm. Hindi ngayon, ang hindi natin ginagawa ngayon yung nagre-respond lang tayo kung kailan merong mga sakuna, may mga situation. No? Mm -hmm. Kaya nga may mga uh, capability building, ongoing yan, hindi lang for Pantawid Pamilya Program. For other things. Okay, yes. okay let's, so, so let's move on to another topic. Uh, no, um, let's talk about child laborers. Um, and over the past decade, according to the NSO, um, it seems that the number of uh, child laborers are on the rise. Uh, when, what are your thoughts on this? You, you, have you been evaluating this and studying this? Do you, do you think that, uh, is this a fact that the number of child laborers are on the rise? Yes. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Why, why do you think this is happening? Uh, uh, do you, again, do you think that the government is is, is kind of failing uh, in its <laughs> role in trying to prevent this uh, this I don't know this uh, I guess questionable uh, situation of, of children being in the labor uh, force? Gaya nga ng sinabi ko Rod, no. Kung may malinaw na programa ang gobyerno, hindi na kailangan. No? Hindi mo na kailangan na makita yung like yung mga bata na nagkalat, nagtatrabaho as young as 5, no? Mm -hmm. may, may, lalo na sa probinsya, no, in the provinces, no, you see children like 
in the yung mga tubuhan no mm -hmm. and uh, koprahan no these are rising in numbers so so tinimo you know, may may lack of monitoring and may lack of implementation again of the of the laws mm -hmm. okay um uh, uh, ma patricia uh, and again anecdotally uh, i i see a lot of children uh, working and uh, just from my own experience and although i'm not again that's just based on my experience no and i think uh, a lot of people also feel that way. Uh, would you agree that the number of incidences of, of child uh, laborers is in increasing every year? But, but yung sa data niyo kasi is increasing, no? Yes. And that is as based on as as of 2011. Okay, 2011. Okay. Yeah. So, Can you pero, give us an update on, on, on that? Oh, but, well, uh, the update might, might be, can come from the Department of Labor, no? Mm -hmm. Because they have the program, that they are the one uh, providing programs and services for child labor mm -hmm. cases, no? Okay. And uh, in fact, the the Department of Labor has a zero child labor uh, policy program, no? Okay. Program. Yun yung kanilang advocacy. Mm -hmm. But is this and again, 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 mm -hmm. up to the local level, yun. Up to the local level, no? Mm -hmm. But uh, sabi nga, kasi kung minsan may mga child labor na mm -hmm. um, pwede natin sabihin as an as a result of mm -hmm. as a result of iba iba uli ang attribution doon no? as a result of family values i always say about family values about uh economic condition of the families mm -hmm. uh and therefore the different agencies are sabi ko doing its best no mm -hmm. to provide different interventions we have to look at you monitoring you you have mentioned the monitoring you know mm -hmm. Uh, child labor, child trafficking, magka yeah, magka ano yan, yan, magka connect connect tayo. And of ano. course, you're, what you're, what you're worried for is it's uh, this council for welfare of children. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that you would be very much involved and concerned about yes uh, child labor. Right? Yes, yes. So, so so we are monitoring how, how what are the uh, what are the different agencies doing about it, no? Mm -hmm. So sabi ko nga ang child labor has a zero child labor uh, mm -hmm. advocacy program yan, no? So mm -hmm. we well, are looking you, into uh, those who are into sugar cane, those into yeah. mining. Patricia, uh, uh, when you say monitoring, I mean, apart from just, I guess, overseeing and having social worker, uh, workers going around and, I guess, observing, how do you specifically monitor? Do you have people accountable in, uh, in uh, specific uh, uh, cities? Because, yeah. like, for example, we, we have regions which have the highest incidence of child labor, where Central Luzon, Bicol, Western Visayas, Northern Mindanao, and Central Visayas. We know this. We, in other words, this mm -hmm. is based on the National Statistics Office. Yeah. Uh, are, uh, is there, let's say, in your office, for example, are there is there a particular stress on, on these regions where you where you are getting reports of high incidences of, of child labor? Uh, this is how we how the structure of the Council for the Welfare of Children. Um, we are a monitoring body, mm. uh, how the laws are being implemented. Mm, okay. But the one implementing the the interventions, the programs and services, are different agencies. Mm -hmm. So if we find data that would show that there is a high rate of mm -hmm. a specific child issue. We have the Regional Council for the Welfare of, Regional Committee for the Welfare of Children. Mm -hmm. We call them um, RSCWC, mm -hmm. and these are in the regional offices. Okay. The chairperson of the RSCWCs are the regional directors of the DSWD. Okay. So at the regional level, they also meet as a committee mm -hmm. and talk about the situation in the region and what the agencies are doing in to order to address so, this right. situation. Okay. We do not have uh, staff from mm -hmm. the CWC which directly monitor. Okay. What we do is on the national level. So you're the ones you're the ones checking on the, the national the, the, the at national the national level. Offices, yes. right. and, and based on based on what you've been monitoring so far, they're yes, doing yes. A, they're doing a fine yes. job. And the uh, and the uh, the important instrument as what is the basis of monitor where this sambato naka anchor bakit natin mino monitor one is we have we are signatory to the un convention on the rights of the children mm -hmm. and we submit our report compliance mm -hmm. sa mga uh, may mga observation concluding ob con, uh, observation sa un mm -hmm. body so ito yung mga tinitingnan natin on how we really respond mm -hmm. to the children's rights. Right. No? 
And then we have the second national plan of action for children. Mm -hmm. Kaya yung sinasabi ni uh, Weng na hindi sapat. No? Uh, pag tinignan din naman natin... Yung, of, overall, kung tinignan yes, mo overall lahat ng yung, yung, ano, yung kabuuan mm -hmm. niya. No? Uh, so, hindi ko pwedeng sabihin walang ginagawa ang government. Okay. We, Now, um, alright. Uh, at, uh, at this point, we need to take a short break. Uh, don't go away. When we come back, the final points of our guests and results of our ongoing online poll on the issue. Stay tuned, you're watching Opposing Views. We'll be right back. Welcome back, this is Opposing Views. I'm Rod Tepomoseno. Still with us, Patricia Luna, Executive Director of the Council for the Welfare of Children, or CWC, and Rowena Legaspi, Executive Director of Children's Legal Rights and Development Center. Our question for tonight, is the government doing enough to protect children's rights and welfare? Now, uh, before the break, uh, Patricia was making a point that uh, perhaps if you look at uh, you, you know, cases, you will you'll still see children here and there, but overall, if you check the overall program of the, the government, you will see that there's a lot of things going on and, and uh, the Strength. government is certainly doing its part. No? Uh, and and when, we, have, uh, we, have, we are strengthening the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the different interventions. Mm -hmm. We just don't rely on what is in here, but mm -hmm. we have to always look at how we can do better. Okay. Uh, when, uh, anong thoughts mo doon? Uh, parang, if you think overall naman, uh, of course, may marami pa rin tayo nakita mga kids mm -hmm. in the street and mm -hmm. Uh, marami pa rin incidences of child labor but overall yung mga ini-implement ng government sa uh, macro level uh, is more okay naman daw do you, do you agree with that? Um, no maybe the government should also well I don't know how they monitor really and how does this monitoring no, go no, in terms of process no? No? Process and monitoring. Uh, sa tingin mo ano nakikita mong monitoring na ginagawa ng government ano yung or wala kang nakita monitoring at all. Hindi mo na feel. Hindi mo na feel. Hindi mo na feel talaga. Yeah. At all zero, you don't feel it at all when you're you're on the ground, you're working and is there anything yes. at, at all that you that you, uh, yes, that you for example, observe? Ano na observe mo sa government at least uh, on the ground? Yes, for example, uh, we specifically work on the juvenile justice issues and ch children's sexual abuse. Okay, in terms of monitoring the conditions of children inside these so-called holding centers, mm -hmm. which look like a jail structure, mm -hmm. but they just call it holding centers, no? Mm -hmm. You see the conditions of the children, the, well, the unsanitized, uh, they sleep on the floor, things mm -hmm. like that. If, Are you talking about children in correctional yes, facilities? Yes, yeah, uh, in correctional facilities and in holding centers. Holding we, centers they call okay. it holding centers. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, when you see this, if they are really good at monitoring, no, you will not see, you will, you will not see these children, I don't like to call it term inhumane condition, mm -hmm. but But really, in we witness it really because horrific. we work on the ground. Yes. Or anong, uh, anong term naman, ano mo? Para it's unsanitized. You know, you, can you sleep on the floor? Can you like uh, sleep in a facility that there's no ventilation? Imagine that. Can you can you like uh, sleep without privacy at all? And sometimes hmm. the girls and the boys are the that. only different. Yung pinakabar lang talaga yung nagahati sa kanila. Mm -hmm. Yung mga ganong conditions and the the bathroom or CR yeah. is yeah. it doesn't work well so mm -hmm. things like that so mm -mm. if mm -hmm. us we cannot live in that situation how no for for one second or two seconds maybe how can, imagine how can these uh, children uh, living there for some months and you know observe more yes. uh, on the ground mm -hmm. uh, uh, Patricia, they can address yeah. the condition if they really monitor mm -hmm. yeah. Patricia what, what are your thoughts on that I mean if you go I, I'm assuming that uh, I mean members from the CWC and other members of the government go to these facilities, these correctional facilities no, uh, of children, and, and uh, that's what's been observed firsthand by, by Wang. Uh, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you address that? What are, what are the points that you can say no. to, to counter that? On the part of the national government, no, particularly the DSWD, we have the standards, standards uh, for uh, centers Um, serving as rehabilitation mm -hmm. center for uh, children in conflict with the law. Mm -hmm. And this is part of the monitoring uh, mechanism no? mm -hmm. in order to address whatever conditions that are not uh, 
protecting the children. Mm -hmm. So, ang ibig ko sa sabihin ay that uh, yung mga of course there are there are places, no? There are facilities na kulang, mm -hmm. no? Kulang sa uh, mga bagay na that will improve the situation of the children. At least even the basic. Yes, uh, the basic. That then that this is uh, being brought to the attention of the local local, local governments because they 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 man the facility. Because uh, hindi naman kayo na pumunta doon. Hindi kayo hindi kayo pumunta doon. No, we are not. We are not. Right? We are not you, but we have institutions also for the DSWD. Mm. No. Uh, now because of the law, um, juvenile justice welfare mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. Ito yung ina-advocate na mag-establish ng bahay pag-asa. Mm -hmm. uh, because this will be a, a center that will have the uh, ideal facility mm -hmm. and, and, and interventions. Mm -hmm. So, madag, mada, magkaroon lang ng bahay pag-asa for in every municipality, in every city. Mm -hmm. Although there are already bahay pag-asa, mm -hmm. that will improve the interventions for the children in conflict with the law. Hmm. At sinasabi natin, again, hindi lang dapat bahay pag-asa ka agad eh. Community pa rin. Hmm. Family and community pa rin. Hmm. Kaya ako nakikita ko, that is not, not only me, no? This is based on the consultation that we are doing, based on the assessment and evaluation, even with the NGO. Marami kaming partners hmm. na non-government organization, private organizations, helping, helping hmm. uh, address this issue ay talagang kailangan palakasin natin yung prevention na intervention. So, this starts from the family to the community. Mm -hmm. no? It doesn't be... So, in other uh, words, uh, at least in your part, part of the government, you're, all, you're mobilizing not just people in the government, but also working with yes, organizations yes. in have. order to have, yes. and communicate with them. Yes, to ensure that there's, there's a lot of uh, yes. communication going on insofar as yes. the, uh, the, the situation of the children. Yes, are there are partnerships, several uh, partnerships. Okay, um, let me shift gears a bit. No? Uh, and I, I wanted to touch on this, and uh, Wang, I wanted to ask you, we're the leading source of child pornography in Asia. Do you think the government is doing enough to, to curb this, um, this, this horrible thing of, of child pornography? No, because the fact that it's increasing also in number child pornography, no? mm. uh, I think the government is not doing enough its best no, to curb this mm -hmm. uh, human rights concerns of right. children also. Uh, Patricia, your, your, your thoughts on that? Are, are you... Are you aware of the, the increasing number of incidences of, of child pornography, especially from our, uh, I mean, the, the young Filipino children? Is this something, and, and what are the programs that the government is doing for, uh, um, to address this? Yes, this, okay. Uh, issue? There is now a law of RA 9775. Mm -hmm. This is the Anti Child Pornography Act mm -hmm. of 2009. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there are different agencies working on this, on how to one is to how to stop. The those who are posting uh, sin yeah. uh, in, in the in the internet that will lead to child pornography. Right. So the PNP has the anti anti cyber crime mm -hmm. uh, unit. Right. No, these are and the, that we have the uh, I see inter uh, the communication technology office ICTO. Uh, looking at how we can, uh, how can those who are putting all this kind of obs the, the scene, the negative, the scene in, in the television, how they can be punished. Uh, but of course, monitoring is one of the challenge. Mm -hmm. And we have to have the cooperation of the different, uh, um, like the Globe and the other uh, uh, telecom provider, telecoms, telecom yeah. providers, uh, company, in order to so you're working uh, with them. You're working with yes, the private we are working also. with them. And so we have we have the interagency council for the okay. for the anti child pornography, and that, that is headed by the under secretary of the DSWD. Okay. And we have also uh, uh, several activities on advocacy. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have uh, trained different agencies mm -hmm. on how to manage. Mm -hmm. cases of uh, child pornography mm -hmm. and how to detect cases mm -hmm. of child pornography, especially, again, in the barangay. Has there been a clamp down on the part of the, the police or the authorities uh, and clamping down on these, I guess, yes, child yes, pornography yes, sites? Yes, yes, uh, yes. Has there yes. been, uh, have, you been, have you been getting reports of, 
of let's say raids, uh, raids of yes, uh, yes, there right. are, there are, there are, right. there are. All right. Now, okay, we've reached our, our, our final few minutes of the show. Uh, at this point, I'd like to ask uh, our guests, no, Patricia and Wang, to give your final words uh, to our televiewers. Again, the whole point of, of our conversation here tonight is to to be able to uh, appraise our audience, no, of the situation with regards to uh, children uh, and their rights and welfare. And so, uh, Patricia, I'll, I'll give you the floor first. Uh, please uh, give us your final words regarding yes. this question. Is the government doing enough uh, mm -hmm. to protect uh, children's rights and welfare? I, as I have been mentioning uh, during our conversation that we have to strengthen the, the local council for the protection of children. That mm -hmm. goes down to the Barangay Council for the Protection of Children. And so the CWC, in a partnership with different agencies and NGO, has launched the seal of child-friendly local governance. Mm -hmm. We confer, this is the first time that we do, did it, we confer the seal of child-friendly local mm -hmm. governance to the LGUs, which meets the, the 12 indicators. The criteria. Criteria. Okay. 12 indicators, which addresses child abuse cases that will respond to the decrease or response to cases of child abuse, child labor, the health, the malnutrition, and other mm -hmm. child welfare issues. So this is not a, it's a mandatory audit. Whether they like it or not, they are audited. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the performance of the local council for the protection of children will show how have the, they did their job. And after this, we have the, it goes up to the presidential award mm -hmm. for child-friendly yeah. local governance. Okay. So and this is a means of monitoring and looking at what are the areas to be improved, mm -hmm. how we can help the local, the local child protection councils, uh, how we can help be of help. It is not punishing. Mm -hmm. It is more of looking at how we can help them, strengthen we'll their intervention, yeah. their mechanism, their uh, offices mm -hmm. in addressing this uh, child welfare issues. And for the local council for the protection of children, it is an interagency. Okay. They have members from national government organizations, and we have now children sitting in the Council for the okay. Protection of Children. Okay. This is what we call about child participation. Right. They can say there how what, what they, they look at the government, mm -hmm. how they look at their situation, and how they want the different stakeholders address mm -hmm. There are different issues. Thank you very much, Patricia. Thank you Thanks so much. And uh, on the other side, uh, Wang, uh, your final words to our to our audience. Our okay. Viewers. Is the government doing enough? No, uh, I think the government is not doing enough. But maybe they are doing something, but not enough to exact to address the issues mm -hmm. on child protection, rights, and welfare. No, uh, they are really good in writing reports, especially when submitting to the United Nations Human Rights uh, Council during the Universal Periodic Review and other treaty bodies like the Convention on the Rights of the Child Committee. But uh, looking when you look at the report, it's very, very good and it's very really motivating, inspiring. But when you check, the real situation is different. That's why we NGO submit our own alternative reports mm -hmm. because we are on the ground working. Even without a budget, we can check, we can monitor the situation. So we really witness, we are the first-hand witness no, to these violations. So... Yeah, so we there's are an importance strong. to be vigilant. Uh, the right. Vigilance is very important, not just on your part, but also for, for everyone. For everyone, yes. To, uh, I think it's all our responsibility to tell our government Nothing. what we feel and what uh, what we feel, what we observe. Maybe they uh, have to observe. check also. Yes. yes, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you to our guests for this evening. Patricia Luna, Executive Director of uh, the Council for the Welfare of Children, or CWC, and Rena Legaspi, uh, Executive Director of Children's Legal Rights and Development Center. Now let's see the results of our online poll. We ask you, is the government doing enough to protect children's rights and welfare? Those who answered yes, 30%, the government is doing enough. And those who answered no, 70%. And that's our opposing views for tonight. Tune in again next week for another bold and engaging discussion on today's most relevant issues. I'm Rod Depomoceno. Good night, God bless, happy weekend, and Merry Christmas.